request is for plan development approval in R10 zoning uh, for a single family residential subdivision with a specific site plan. Um, in your packet, of course, the same surveys and general maps, uh, but we'll go forward to the master plan. We're going here some of the properties. In your packet is a copy of this proposed master plan. This is where a lot of the discussion has centered around. Um, they're proposing, I think it's 134 lots by this design. This is a conceptual layout. This has not been engineered or has it been submitted for formal approval. Uh, but on the left side of the plan in your packet, you see some project information particulars. Uh, but what they're proposing as the plan development is to have deviations from what is would otherwise be standard development or conventional development in RCAN. They're proposing what some of us would term a conservation style subdivision where you have lands dedicated uh, for open conservation space and then you allocate the development density of that into a smaller area. Um, the idea in that is generally speaking the net number of dwelling units or development on the property does not change it's just rearranged within the property. Um, most of the lots that they're showing here are a little more of an R6 standard. They're 65 feet wide um, and 100 and something feet deep. But you see on that information chart, um, average lot area is around 7,500 square feet. That's more than R6, but less than R10. Uh, they're also proposing reduced setback distances, uh, 20 feet in the front, 20 feet in the rear. Residential zoning, something higher, require 30 feet, at least on this size right of way. And then six feet side yard is what they're proposing. All residential zoning districts in Hayhauer are 10 feet. In your packet, this is showed a little more clearly on page three. And just the list of the actual deviations where we list the zoning ordinance requirement on the left side of the chart and then the applicant's proposal on the right side. And you see the differences between R10 zoning and what they're proposing. Um, so the zoning ordinance would deal with lot area, lot width, the different setback distances. Also, some minor consideration though, hey, our subdivision regulations do not recognize hammerheads in lieu of a cul-de-sac, even though functionally they work the same. Um, staff actually thinks a, a well-designed hammerhead works better, looks better. Uh, but they are proposing one of the streets to have that, I think, for some variety sake. And then also the landscaping ordinance requires a landscape to main entrance. Um, it's required. They're not showing it in detail on the plan, but keep in mind this is still conceptual and there's plenty of room at this entrance um, or an entrance where you could do that. The overall concern that staff has is this design in general reflects a conventional design, um, mostly tailored after R6, even though parts of it are larger and meet an R10 standard, but generally an R6 conventional design and staff does not believe that is the, meets the intent of the plan development regulations for Hay Hira. Um, on the top of page three, I've given you some quotes out of the ordinance about plan development. Um, there's plan development criteria, there's A through D, uh, particularly with letter B and letter D. Uh, B, plan development shall closely conform to the uses permitted and density standards of the zoning district, which already applies to the subject property. And then D, plan development shall not be used as merely a means to avoid full compliance with standard development regulations for purposes of private gain. Development proposals that can easily be accomplished under standard development regulations and or different zoning classification will not be approved as a plan development. That's part of the concern. Um, I think this property, the, the strongest argument in favor of it is the wetlands. As you see, it is a very irregular pattern. These are jurisdictionally delineated wetlands, um, but they're not quite what you would see. Let's go through the pictures for a moment. Subject property from Burke Ridge looks like this. Remember, when you walk back into the property, you see where most of the trees have been cleared. It is fairly flat. Um, someone has got their deer stand there. Um, and since the last rain, I'm amazed at how many deer prints I have seen. That place is crawling. <laughs> um, 
The, if you look closely in the center of this picture and the picture before, you see a red flag. This is the delineation marking of the wetlands boundary. So this is what the wetlands look like in terms of looking at or down the boundary lines. It is not a cypress swamp. It is not forested wetlands like we typically see. Um, this would be a wet prairie, would be the type of wetlands that we're looking at. And my only thought is the wetlands delineator work awfully hard finding this because most of the land looks very similar. The concern I've got is when you go back to the master plan, the wetlands that are behind houses, typically without seeing the actual property, you think, well, there's a forested area behind it. Uh, one example we have locally is Grove Point, where you've got wetlands areas. It's a nice wooded area. It's a very nice amenity for the development. I think the developer here is going to be challenged to do something that's appealing with this wetlands, um, and it's going to take a lot of fault to do it. <clears throat> My concern is, is what will it look like five or ten years from now? When it's an unattended wet prairie, how will it grow up? I don't know. That's just a long-term question. I think there's tremendous potential here for a quality plan development that uses some creativity, a mixture of housing densities and styles. We'll talk about some of those at the work session. It's just not currently reflected as such on the master plan. I know the applicants, and they will be telling you this, they have spent a lot of time and effort on getting this far. Um, they have stated they're not interested in spending a lot more time on it. Um, they're ready to put it forward and let it be voted upon. So I do not believe they will entertain tabling or redesign of this. Um, otherwise, with these three cases, annexation of rezoning is a no-brainer in staff's term. Um, but plan development, I think this falls short of what plan development is intended to be. But yet this property has tremendous potential to be a nice planned development residential subdivision. Um, so with that, staff is recommending denial of the planned development as it is being requested. Do we have questions for staff? So Matt, regarding the, just so I'll understand this, regarding the typical lot size, minimum lot size setbacks that are presented here, albeit in a conceptual diagram, None of those actually qualify within part, part 10, did it? Correct. Um, the biggest issue, I mean, front and rear yard, 20 feet instead of 30. Audubon Heights, which is the only other planned development in Hanghara, has front and rear setbacks of 20 feet, um, at least on many of their lots. I think a lot of their lots are irregular. Um, Audubon Heights does have an 8-foot side back, uh, setback on many of them, but not all. What they're proposing is 6 feet. Conventionally, all residential zoning districts in Hanghara, whether it be R6, R10, or even R15, the side yard setback is 15, or excuse me, 10 feet in all of the districts. Um, the applicant's proposal, I think, has a lot of merit on this northern property line, which is the left side of what you see on the screen. That is an R6 subdivision immediately next to it, that's Mulberry Place. And so I think an R6 pattern close to it next to an R6 pattern. I think there's strong justification for that. Um, only thing I would recommend or would have recommended as a plan development is increasing the lot depth just a little bit more to allow a buffer there, like maybe 10 feet. That gets the lots larger than 6,000, which is what they're already proposing, but maybe a little closer to 8,000 and match the pattern there. I would also consider a zero lot line development along that road something we don't see very much of in Lowndes County, but we do have some of it here. Um, and for a zero lot line proposal, I would have recommended a 15-foot side yard on the one side. So that puts 15 feet between buildings. That's less than the conventional spacing of 20 feet, but more than the 12 feet being proposed by the applicant. What it does is change the fencing diagram, and it gives each house a decent side yard. Um, if you do it right, it can make for a very attractive, nice development, particularly in a row of houses like that. I would do something similar on the other side of the street from them to mirror it so that becomes sort of an R6 corridor. That would be the only high-density part of the development that's strictly single-family. I would increase these lot sizes to include some of the wetlands area as part of the lot, 
that gets us up to 10,000 square feet or more. Um, in some of these little nooks, I would look at doing clusters of villas. You know, something outside the box where you have shared driveways, some landlocked parcels. I would also propose to Hay Hiram to do something other than a standard 50 foot right away with curb and gutter and sidewalks. Um, development costs are high these days. Not all streets in a subdivision, particularly those with very little traffic, really need that kind of infrastructure treatment. And so I would be proposing that on at least part of the development. Again, lots of different ideas, lots of potential. I love the fact that they put a park in the center of one area, but you see the wetlands are far from those houses. I think there's room to make that wider and therefore a more attractive recreational type park, not just a passive park. Um, again, that would also make a good plan to vote. Wetlands, I think someone needs to come up with a game plan on how to maintain those who's going to own them and what might they look like years from now. Um, Phasing of the development is not indicated here, although it's anticipated they are wanting to phase it. And I would guess between northern and southern sections. Um, one possibility is to get approval for a phase one to see what kind of pattern presents itself and then talk about future phases. That would be another option. Matt, do any of the lots in this proposed PD actually uh, are actually RTM plots? Quite a few. If you look at the pattern, the larger ones on Burke Ridge, those I think are half acre lots. Uh -huh. um, some of the interior streets, you can see the larger ones, particularly around the cul de sacs, the ones that are a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Those are close to or just over an R10. Um, it's really the ones on the north side where they all kind of look the same. Mm -hmm. Those are the 65 foot wide lots that they're showing. But some are larger, but again, this is a conceptual plan that's not been engineered in terms of precision of the lot widths, but it's a general average. Um, they're trying to get a 65 foot wide lot pattern along the streets. Uh, it's just generally some of the lots are a little deeper than others. That's some of my concern for the on the narrow of the street. Just keep in mind on these short 90 degree turns now. Correct. The, um, I would agree the pavement should be the same as required, which in Hayhire is 22 feet wide. Um, what I'm more concerned about is 50 foot right of way. Um, in some places, to accommodate utilities that may be necessary, in some places, not. Um, perhaps a 40 foot right of way would be good, and maybe not with curving up. Um, like the gentleman said, there's a runoff issue from this property already and allowing to spread the stormwater out everywhere might be one solution to help with that. And of course, when they engineer the property, they're going to have to address all of that anyway. But not channeling the water everywhere might be helpful. Um, you know, old economy subdivisions with grass swales, sometimes there's something to be said for that if they're not too deep. Is there anyone here not wishing to speak on behalf of the request? Please come forward, Mr. Phelps. Oh. Uh, um, first of all, uh, drainage. I was brought up. Yes. As we all know drainage is going to be taken care of in the new chamber design where there's no more after than there was when we started. Uh, typically it's usually less. Brookwood um, Drive is on the response list for Lowndes County actually to be paved in the coming years. Um, so that whole road will get redesigned. This is why the large culverts upside, all that sort of thing. So I think a lot of that will actually fix itself over time. Um, the uh, PD and Hay Hira, I, I agree with Matt on most of his stuff, but I would love to design a subdivision for everything you just talked about. Um, the, the reality is I've got um, fire trucks, ambulances, fire chief, uh, police chief that says um, I can't 
can't take anything less than, than standard. Um, I did do that hammerhead design just to be something a little different, not to use up so much space for a ton of asphalt. I've actually done a couple of those in Valdosta and they do work very well. Um, the reason I did do the other one is it's a little bit longer uh, street and say a fire truck gets down there, can't back out as easy. Um, that part of the distance they could on shore. Um, the park, those are actually one way streets on either side of the one lane streets, one direction. Um, that's something that's actually not allowed. I think our standard subdivision code, uh, that hammerhead's not allowed. Um, the, so I, I'm trying to incorporate some things that are a little out of the ordinary um, in the spirit of the plan development. <coughs> a little different. The work has been batted around for the past year with ARC to the council through numerous meetings is the word creative. Um, I like to do things that are creative, but when you're on a 40 acre piece of land next to a sewer spray field um, and a rover track behind you and the subdivision to the north, um, there's a limit to what you can do with creative um, and, and all the wetlands and still make this anywhere near um, little. So um, all these lots are bigger than R6. Some of them are RTM half acres, uh, such as running on Brookridge Drive. I made sure there's four lots only facing the R1s across the street. There's five across the street. We're only looking at four in comparison. So um, I did take that into account uh, just for their, their vision to have to look at is less than what they have. Uh, I actually spoke with the um, utility director at Hyra, uh, fire chief. I spoke with him personally about making right of ways more narrow. Um, it's basically a hard no, you know, not going to accept it. Um, hey, Hyra doesn't allow sewer mains under their road like the Crown County does. But also the same way. They want it outside of the street behind the curb and go. And once you do that, anything less than 50 feet, which is just shown, you start getting easements in people's front yards. And then that just causes a whole other set of issues. Um, down the road for maintenance. Um, the setbacks, why they're 20 instead of 30, like R10. Uh, well, these are smaller than R10. And what I've seen in a lot of R6 um, size lots is you end up with, if you use the standard setbacks, all the houses are lined up perfectly down the street, in front of all the garage of the house. If you give people some flexibility, front and back, I see them. Some people like a big front one. They like to be sitting in the yard waiting for their neighbors versus in the backyard. Some people like to be in the backyard because they want privacy, don't want to see the neighbor. That gives them flexibility to move the house front and back to their preference. And you actually do end up with not a row of houses down the street is really what you end up with, um, which to me is a better look. Um, extending property lines into the wetlands to technically make them be 10,000 square feet. I can do that because I have the buildable area is in the orange outside of the wetland. So just to simply give them that, that property, that's no problem, I'll do that. Um, uh, HOAs will be owning all of the green space, wetlands, anything you green. Uh, that's that will be owned, operated, maintained, legally viable HOA that will be set up as a part of um, legal documents by the plant. Um, I think there's anything that y'all have any other questions, any other concerns I've raised and I've forgotten to kind of address a little bit what my thinking was. So, it's either take this plan or not, you know, get on. Well, the history, go back and read. like Mr. Martin said, uh, we've been batting this back and forth with the city of Hay Hire, uh, their council, uh, about a year. Um, we've had multiple meetings with individual councilmen, the mayor, city manager. Uh, we've given them two presentations at the council work session. Um, and this is significantly different from the beginning, mainly right? because at the beginning we were kind of doing some educated guesses on the weapons. But I advised the owner spend the money, about $3,000 to get them delineated. 
so we can know exactly what you have to work with. Let's get the most accurate picture we can. And I can do the most accurate layout as possible. So, um, and that created a lot of change to the proposed layout. It did. Um, density was something I, I heard. Just for everyone, I'm an engineer, I like one. Um, density on an R10 is usually somewhere between uh, 4.3 lots per acre. I think so. I've heard 23.6 is more on average from what I see in my line of work. That result 160 lots in R10. We never get that. I've only proposed 134. Um, simply because all the wetlands make such irregular shapes that you can't just line houses up in straight lines. I personally don't like that. Something similar to what y'all saw last month, actually, that went through. That's a quarter mile straight run, no curves. I didn't do that here. I don't, I don't do that in my designs. I like to put some character to it. Um, curves, one-way streets, parked in the middle, something a little different. So I'd say, yeah, if this plan development isn't approved, um, I don't know what else to do. What else to consent? You say you want flexibility so you can move the house back and forth. Um, if you move it back, when we get the property line, probably the building. Move it up, to be a 10 foot maybe. Um, we already teeter with 20 on each side, and then six now, excuse me, six on each side, and 20 on front, front and back. That's probably. Foot, a 20 foot deep yard versus a 30. Um, I don't think that's a huge difference. I mean, the one behind would also have a 20 minimum. That's assuming both houses of people shut their houses as far back as possible. Um, I think what the developer is getting at is we're trying to increase the buildable area on each lot, forwards and backwards. If it was six lots, it's one thing. Correct. Numerous. It just was not deep. If you look at their typical lot, they're proposing it 115 feet deep. If you take off 40 feet of setbacks, 20 rear, 20 front, that leaves you a buildable depth of 75 feet. If those setbacks were 30 each, you'd be looking at a buildable depth of 55 feet. So their thinking is in a 75 foot, you've got more distance forwards and backwards to slide the house footprint. Yeah. You're, you're still 12 foot away from the neighbor. The sides are brighter. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, so the sides, 12 foot. Yeah. Yeah. The staff only came to the Yeah, yeah. The staff's only concerned 20 feet front is fine. You just don't meet the coverage of the land. Say that again, Matt. Well, I mean, I. Personally, like how about us, it does it with some of these residential zonings. They impose a 30-foot setback for a front-facing garage. The rest of the house can be 20 feet. It allows room for extra room in the driveway to park your car so the cars don't back out or hang out over a sidewalk or into the street. If you have a 20-foot setback from a garage door to the street and you're trying to park a full-size automobile there, most people don't park up against the garage door. So that's filling your driveway and then perhaps a little bit of right of way with your vehicle. Well, that typical 20 feet is from the right of way, so actually And a few feet correct to the pavement. Yeah. It's just when you look down the street, that's what you see. 10 feet extra distance, not necessarily people will park in that, but at least it gives a little more room for a car to be further off the road. That's the, the theory behind it. Commissioners, do y'all have any other questions for? Sorry. We have not read it. <laughs> um, I was going to ask if you had any other questions for our speaker. Okay. We ran out of time, but in the interest, I want everybody to be able to speak. Is there somebody else who wishes to speak on behalf of your request? I'll give you a couple of minutes. Okay. Let's move to those who wishes to speak against the request. If you'd like to speak against the request, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Is this a request for the uh, plan, development. plan development? Yes, sir. I, I'd just like to say I'm Jimmy Miley, 25 North Old Street, a hire, representing the property 
to the east. Um, I'm just against it. I think it's too, it sounds like there's just too much hanging out there and it's just too big. And um, I just you showed a lot of wetlands up there. And it, I grew up in that little house right there. And, uh, that place gets awfully wet. So I, it just sounds like too big. Thank you. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else here tonight who wishes to speak? <clears throat> John Holland, 663 Cooper Road, Northwest. Um, still concerned about the flooding. I hear a lot of ifs and maybe. <coughs> we're talking about wetlands. We're talking about may or may not pay the road in a couple of years. I'm a little concerned about the buffer right across the street. Is it going to be one or not? Uh, a little concerned about the, the entrance way where it's positioned. We're moving pretty quickly, so we still have time. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against the request? This is the plan development. Okay. There are no others wishing to speak against. I'll turn it back to the commissioners for discussion. Any discussion? Any questions for staff? All right. I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> yes, Commissioner Graham. I recommend with my HA 2019-5 that we follow the staff recommendation of the All right, we have a motion for denial. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Willis. All right, any discussion on the motion? Any other discussion? If not, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of denying this request, please raise your right hand. All right. All those against? It is unanimous. All right. Thank you very much. One last request. Uh, Chairman, this